Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Engineering Today, and hope you're all having a great day. So let's start with our first update about SpaceX rolling Starship SN11 to the launch pad. It's been less than a week since SpaceX's epic Starship SN10 rocket landing, and the company is already gearing up for another test flight. According to the report, SN11 prototype rolled out to its test stand Monday, March 8th, at SpaceX's proving grounds near Boca Chica Village in South Texas ahead of an upcoming launch. SpaceX wants its prototype ready for launch within a short period of time. The new Starship prototype SN11, like its predecessors, is destined to pass through several tests before signaling for launch. The test will include a cryogenic proof test, a combined wet dress rehearsal and static fire or fires. SpaceX is aiming to carry out all the tests and wet dress rehearsals with its vehicle within a week. Just after five days from SN10's historic launch and landing in one piece and, of course, exploding, SpaceX is now showing some more hope with its new Starship SN11. SpaceX has rolled out SN11 from the factory to the launch pad in Boca Chica. Mary of Boca Chica Gale tweeted on the 8th of March 2021, this morning, Starship SN11 is preparing to roll to the launch site. NASA spaceflight. SpaceX teams plan to complete cryogenic proof and static fire testing within the upcoming four to seven days to come. On completing all the tests and routine works within the scheduled time, SN11 can easily head towards launch as early as next week. SN11 may have a limited chance of carrying SpaceX's ambitious target schedule, from the past Starships, SN8, SN9, and SN10, it's expected that launch of SN11 will commence in late March. Carrying out the cryogenic proof test is SpaceX's next prime motive after placing the Starship, SpaceX SN11, test to flight campaign will be much faster than the previous test to flight campaigns of SN8, 9, and 10. Starship SN10's hard landing and subsequent explosion was a sign of good hope, but with little blemishes. Now it's to see what SpaceX works out with their SN11 prototype. If all goes according to the plan, then very soon we'll see SN11 soaring the sky. Some nominal to minor changes have been done at the launch site after Starship SN11 scheduled rollout. It's expected Starship SN11 will have some changes in landing legs in order to evade the same fate as SN10. Let us hopefully wait for SN11 flight. Let's move to our next news regarding SpaceX taking aim with Starlink expansion. David Goldman, SpaceX's Director of Satellite Policy, said in a regulatory filing that their Earth Stations in Motion ESIM, equipment is electrically identical to its previously authorized consumer user terminals but have mountings that allow them to be installed on vehicles, vessels, and aircraft, which are suitable for those environments. SpaceX is looking for a regulatory approval to link up broadband network to roaming vehicles from their Starlink constellation of satellites. These easily spread broadband network outside static places such as homes, offices, and institutions. SpaceX is seeking regulatory approval to connect its rapidly growing network of internet beaming Starlink satellites to cars, trucks, shipping boats, and aircraft. SpaceX is asking the Federal Communications Commission for authorization similar to the blanket license for setting up Earth stations. FCC has been told by SpaceX recently that they're having more than 10,000 Starlink users in the United States, Canada, and abroad. SpaceX's Starlink is now focusing on their potentialities in Tesla, which makes cars that currently rely on terrestrial telecom companies for network connectivity. Starlink can be used for providing connectivity in Tesla cars. In the previous year, SpaceX has appealed for FCC permission to test Starlink services on private jet planes as well as on the drone ships it rockets use for landing. Musk has recently said in a tweet on the 9th of March 2021, not connecting Tesla cars to Starlink as our terminal is much too big. This is for aircraft, ships, large trucks, and RVs. Brad Grady, principal analyst of Northern Sky Research, said, 
Right now, there really isn't a high bandwidth, low latency form factor solution for that market segment that would match the terminal form factor of Starlink. Perhaps once mPower and their terminal segment develop in the next couple of years, we'll see another competitor there. But the COTP market is a far easier nut to crack in my view. With the Starlink in market, rival satellite operators like Inmarsat, SES, and Intelsat will be the most affected in the land mobile market. Grady also said that Mobile Satellites Service MSS, businesses at Inmarsat and Iridium Communications will get more disrupted when maritime products will be switched to the Very Small Aperture Terminals VSATs. Chimeta, an antenna-making company and other competitors in the Communications on the Pause market segment, will also be affected with SpaceX's Starlink market strategy and product policies. Almost all other non-GEO, high-throughput satellite constellations have been diversifying into other markets. And Grady said investors and industry have already taken Starlink as a competitive threat. Potential partner or solution as they prepare for its eventual entrance in a huge way in the market. Let's move to our last news regarding China rolling out new Long March 7A. On the 7th of March 2021, a Chinese rocket named Long March 7A was rolled out. The rocket is 60 meters in length. Just like the present-day rockets, it also uses liquid oxygen and kerosene as fuel. The Wenchang Launch Center will carry out launch of the 7A rocket. This rocket launch will be the second attempt of Long March 7A to place a large satellite as payload into geosynchronous transfer orbit. The first attempt of this Long March rocket was carried out in the first quarter of 2020, but that mission failed. But the failure was not officially revealed. According to a report, there was a loss of pressure after the first stage separation. The inadequate pressure in the tanks triggered the explosion. In January 2021, the equipments of the rocket for its second launch attempt and also its payloads were transported to the Wenchang Launch Center. The Yanwang-22 cargo payload of the China Satellite Launch and Tracking Control General was also delivered at that time. On the 8th of March, Wenchang Space Authorities have issued road closure notices for the launch. The road closure notices state that the launch of the 7A rocket will take place within 11th March, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Notifications regarding the second launch attempt of the Long March have not been released yet same was the case during the previous launch attempts. There's no issuance of navigational safety warnings, so its trajectory is not known. According to a report, Chinese space authorities want to carry out the mission without revealing the launch time and the payload listing. Previous missions have included Technology Verification Series satellites as payloads. The Long March 7A is designed to launch and deploy satellites in the geostationary transfer orbit. China has made this newer version rocket to replace the most used Long March 3B rocket. The rocket is capable of transporting 7 metric tons of payloads to GTO. The Long March 7A is a variant of the Long March 7 rocket. The Long March 7 rocket is designed primarily to launch cargo spacecraft to China's space station, which it's yet to build. China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology says that the 7A rocket has a takeoff mass of 573 metric tons. The rocket uses YF-100 and YF-115 engines and use kerosene and oxygen as fuel for the first, second, and booster stages. The third stage uses YF-75 engines, burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as fuel. The new 7A launcher uses the same Carolox core with a diameter of 3.35 meters and four side boosters. An additional Hydrolox third-stage engine is installed to allow the vehicle to send payloads to GTO. The Long March 7A launches from the coastal Wenchang spaceport, so it's easily predictable that flight path is over the sea, and it would be easy to reduce dangers as well as costs for managing rocket fallouts. In the past, Chinese rockets used the dinitrogen tetroxide and dimethylhydrazine propellant, which were toxic, corrosive and carcinogenic. 
so it needed additional safety tests to handle the fuel. At present, Carolox fuel has lowered safety costs as it needs lower safety measures. A Long March 5B is currently being assembled at Wenchang to launch the first module for China's space station. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.